I'm Maddie, and today I'm going out for a nice long walk. I don't know about you, but when I go on a long walk, I like to take a few things with me. What do you take? I've got some snacks in here, a juicy apple and a drink, fizzy water. It's one of my favourites. Oh, I love that sound. And did you see how all the bubbles rose to the top when I opened the bottle? But how do the bubbles get into the water? Do you know how fizzy water works? Let's find out. How does it work? Fizzy water. To show you how fizzy water is made, I've come to a fizzy water factory where they produce around 2 million bottles of water every day. The water is stored inside these tanks before it goes into the factory to get its bubbles. But where does the water come from? The water comes from this spring where rainwater has collected underground for thousands of years. It bubbles up to the surface and is sent through pipes into the factory. And it's sent to something called a chiller. The chiller cools down the water so that it's nice and cold before it gets put into bottles. But the water inside the chiller looks like this. It's still, which means it doesn't have any bubbles. It's not fizzy like this one. So how does still water become fizzy water? It's time for some bubbles. The still water is made fizzy by these two tanks. This tank is called a carbonation tank. It makes the water fizzy by pushing a gas called carbon dioxide into the water. Here's how it works. Water contains a gas called oxygen. To make the water fizzy, we need to remove the oxygen. Inside the tank is a metal plate with holes in it, like a sieve. The holes are so small that as the water squeezes through them, the oxygen gas escapes, and it's taken away through a vent at the top of the tank. Bye-bye, oxygen. Now the oxygen is removed, we can make the water fizzy. The water, with no oxygen in it, is sent to the second big tank. Here, carbon dioxide gas is pushed into the water very, very fast. As more and more carbon dioxide bubbles fill the tank of water, pressure builds up. This makes the bubbles dissolve into the water so that we can't see them anymore. And now the water is fizzy. The pressure is like a balloon ready to burst. And it stays like this as the water is put into bottles. We only see the bubbles again when the bottle is opened. The pressure is released, we hear a big fizzing sound, and the bubbles rush to the surface. Clever, isn't it? Let's use my special camera to get a closer look at the carbonation tanks. So the cold still water comes in from the chiller, through this pipe and into this first tank. And inside here, all of the oxygen is sieved out. And then it goes into the second tank. And in the second tank, the water gets its bubbles. The carbon dioxide goes in through this pipe just here. And it's squeezed and squeezed into the water until all of the bubbles are dissolved. And then when it's fizzy, the water comes out of the tank, goes through this pipe, off to get put into bottles. This is where the bottles are filled with water. Look how fast the bottles fill up with the water. So this is a finished bottle of fizzy water. I can't see any bubbles, can you? Should we let the bubbles out? Oh! <laughs> Did you hear that? Let's hear it again. What a brilliant hissing sound. As I undid the lid, all of the gas was released and they bubbled up to the top. Let's use my special camera to slow things down and watch it again. This camera films in slow motion, which means that when I open the bottle, the bubbles of gas will be released and we can see it happening really slowly. So, let's press record. You ready? 
can you see there are no bubbles until I open the bottle? And then thousands of tiny bubbles rush to the surface. Now that was brilliant. All of those little bubbles, you can still see them. Those bubbles of carbon dioxide gas were just waiting to be released. And as soon as I undid the lid, they certainly were. They're still going. What was your favourite bit about seeing how fizzy water works? Do you remember the name of the gas that makes the water fizzy? That's right, it's called carbon dioxide. Did you hear the sound the bottle made when I opened it? Oh! <laughs> and did you see the way the bubbles go up inside the bottle when I used my special camera? The next time you have some fizzy water, you'll know how the bubbles got inside and how they stay hidden until you open the bottle. Now, it's time for a snack. Ooh, I could have a yogurt. Yum, strawberry yogurt. I like yogurt, do you? But do you know how yogurt is made. Where does yogurt come from? Let's find out. How is it made? Yogurt. The first things we need to make our yogurt are just in here. Lots and lots of cows. <laughs> Yogurt is made from milk, but the yogurt we're going to see being made today comes from cow's milk. So, to see yogurt being made, first, we need some milk. All these cows are about to be milked, which means their milk is collected from their udders, and you can see their udders underneath the cows. Can you see Rich, the herdsman? He's attaching a special pipe to the cow's udders. This is called a cluster, and it gently sucks the milk from the cow's udders and takes it down this pipe to this plastic tub called a milk meter, which measures the amount of milk the cow produces. And once they're finished milking, the clusters just fall off and the cows head back to the barn. In one day, a single cow can make 21 pints of milk. That's 21 of these. That's enough for 70 bowls of cereal. But how does milk turn into yogurt? Once the milk has been collected, it's taken to the factory in a lorry and stored in huge tanks called milk silos. The milk is then taken from the silos into the factory to be made into yogurt. The first stage is for all of the ingredients to get mixed together, and that happens here in the mixing room. Yogurt is made from milk, cream, some milk powder, and a bit of sugar. And once they're mixed together, they get sent onto the next part of the factory. The next stage happens in here, and it's very noisy. Look at all those pipes. All the ingredients that have now been mixed together are heated up. This is called pasteurization, and it gets rid of any bad bacteria that could be in the milk. Once it's reached the right temperature, the pasteurized mixture is moved into one of these. They're called incubation tanks and they are huge. Now, a special ingredient is added and it will turn the milky mixture into yogurt. The special ingredient is called a starter culture and it's made of a mix of good bacteria. Bacteria has to be kept in the freezer because as soon as it gets warm and is put in the incubator, it starts to multiply. The starter culture is added to the yogurt and then left to get to work. 
And when it's added to the milky mixture inside this incubation tank, it starts to multiply. This means that two good bacteria become four, four become eight, and eight become 16, and so on, until you have lots of good bacteria mixed in with the milk. Inside this incubator, the yogurt has already been mixed, so let's use my special camera to take a look. Whoa! It's so thick and creamy. All of that good bacteria has multiplied and multiplied, which has made everything really thick. It's turned it into yogurt. The yogurt is cooled down to stop the bacteria multiplying anymore, and it's piped to a smaller tank. This is plain natural yogurt and it's lovely on its own. It's great for cooking. You might have even had it on muesli at home, but sometimes it's nice to add a bit of flavor. What flavor yogurt do you like? Do you like peach? Blackcurrant? Let's see what flavor this yogurt's going to be. This is strawberry puree and it's going to turn the plain yogurt into strawberry yogurt, my favorite. The mixer turns the yogurt and fruit puree into a lovely pink colour. It's now time for the drop test. And this is where the team check that the yogurt is the right thickness. If the yogurt is thick enough, it's ready to go into pots. The machine works so quickly. One dollop of yogurt in every pot. And look how many pots there are. This factory could make over a million pots of yogurt a day. I love the sound of the lids being glued down onto the pot. It sounds like a train going over tracks. And here we go, a finished pack of yogurt just like you'd see in the shops or maybe even in the fridge at home. What was your favorite part about seeing how yogurt was made? Do you remember what part of the cow the milk comes from? That's right, it's the udder. Did you hear the sound of the lids being pressed onto the pots? And did you see how the bacteria thickened the yogurt? So the next time you tuck into a tasty yogurt, you'll know that it started out as milk that came from a cow. Thank you, cows. And now you know how the bubbles get into fizzy water. I'll see you next time. There are lots of things.